This example asks us to resolve two unknown forces, one being force F and one being the contact force in this diagram labeled R. And both of these forces are not at the vertical or horizontal, okay? So when we consider these forces, they are at angle other than um, vertical or horizontal. So when we're dealing with forces or unknown forces that are at these angles, we try to resolve them so that we try to eliminate one of the components, either the vertical or the horizontal. Now, when we're given two angles at, or two forces at different angles, it's we have to decide which, uh, which line of action to choose uh, with which force, okay? So given the information and the way that this diagram is presented, we can see that if we make force R our line of action, right? In other words, the slope itself, the line of action, it creates a lot of parallel lines and allows us to resolve force R without splitting up it, it into its components. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to specify my line of action, right? And that's going to be parallel to the slope in this question. So there we have our line of action, right? What that means is that we need to find all of our other forces in relation to this new angle, right? So I'm going to draw the perpendicular as well. And a good suggestion is to then try to work out all the other angles that are created from this. So I'm going to zoom in slightly here and we can look at the inside triangle here. Okay, we first of all, we have this triangle created by the force vector pointing down the angle of the slope, right? And it's at 90 degrees. Based on that, because it's a triangle, we can work out that this inner angle here is 70 degrees, right? And then within this smaller triangle over here, we can work out that this angle down at the bottom here is 20 degrees. Right, we have the angle for force F at 15 degrees, that's given in the information. Now with that, what we can do is, just to show you what, what's happening, is we are taking these new vectors that we've created, right? And we are splitting them off into their separate components, all right? Even though we're not now looking at vertical and horizontal, right, we are still resolving forces and these forces are still going to be the two forces perpendicular to each other. So there's the force of F. It has its vertical component Fy and its horizontal component Fx, right? And this force here is just the force over here, right? Enlarged slightly, right? There's our 10 newtons and I'm just rotating it appropriately to make it easier. Because I can now visually see the two vertical components and the two horizontal components, right? Here's a vertical, there's a vertical, there's a horizontal, and there's a horizontal, okay? The other force is force R, right? And based on my line of action, it is only going to have a vertical component because of the line of action that we chose. This is 10 G Newtons, which is 100 Newtons. And now I'm going to create my equations for the components of the forces. So let's start with force F. I know the internal angle here is 15 degree, degrees as given by the diagram. And so based on that, I can work out that the vertical component F of Y is equal to the force, right? F of Y is opposite, so it's going to be sine 15 degrees. And I can work out then the 
horizontal component, right? It's also F, this time cos because it's the adjacent side, 15 degrees. And I'm going to do the same thing for my next uh, vectors. So this is for the 100 Newton. I'm going to break it up into its two components, so the vertical component, right? So let's work out the internal angles based on the diagram. So if I take this force diagram and I rotate it like that, you can see that the top corner angle right, is going to be, right, if we place it next to that 70 and 20 should make a 90 degree angle, right, because we're working between two parallel lines, then that top angle is going to be 20 degrees. Okay, now obviously you don't have to draw separate force diagrams. You can you can draw dotted lines on your actual diagram instead. Okay, so I'm just going to mark this internal angle here as 20 degrees, that top one. You could also make the bottom one 70 and do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to get my vertical component. So Y is equal to, right, that's 100. This is going to be sine 20 because it happens to be the opposite. And now my vertical component is 100 and this is cos of 20 degrees. Now, if you compare all the components of the forces, you'll notice that we are now actually ready to solve for the horizontal forces. Okay, we only have two horizontal forces because of the way we've chosen to set up our line of action. The contact force, force R, doesn't have a horizontal component, so we can leave it out. Now, because this is an equilibrium, these two horizontal forces have to be equal to each other. So we will make them equal to each other and say F cos 15 must be equal to 100 cos 20. Okay, now we have one unknown to solve, and so we will first solve 100 cos 20. We'll divide that by cos of 15 and solve for F. This will give us 35.4 Newtons. So we have now already worked out the size of force F, right, without having to create any simultaneous equations, simply because we uh, chose the correct line of action. From here, we want to solve the contact force and if you again have a look at our forces, the contact force is just one of three vertical forces, right? And we can actually choose not to call them vertical forces. We can just say they are forces that all act on this line of action, okay? So we need to look at the directions of the forces. And if we have a look, force R is going up. And so is the vertical component of force F, okay? And force Y from the weight of the object is going in the opposite direction. Now, this is an equilibrium, which means that the two forces going up must be equal to the one force going down. So the two forces going up are, I can state your F of Y plus that Y force, and that must be equal to the force of R. Okay, we have already solved what these two are, and so I can just put them into my equation. F sine 15 degrees plus 100 sine 20 degrees must be equal to force R. Okay, we have solved for F in the previous step. So we can substitute that in as 35.4 sine 15 plus 100 sine 20 is equal to R. Okay, and obviously this number here, you will use your exact answer, so save it in the memory function if you need to. Uh, when we're working with trig, remember even the smallest change in decimal can make a big difference when you're solving the problem. Okay, from here, we're just going to put both of these into the calculator at the same time, and we'll get R equal to 84.8.
Newtons. So that is how we would solve a problem like this by choosing a new line of action, right? And mentally in your head, just remind yourself a line of action is just saying instead of having the vertical as if you want to even say north and south, right? In your mind, you can just pretend that you're actually just rotating the north south to whatever satisfies or makes it easier to solve the forces, right? And remembering that it's easier to solve um, forces if we can eliminate one of the components. So again, with force R, because force R is in the line of action or perpendicular to the line of action, there is no component force. And so it makes it easier to solve more involved problems.